Hello everyone. In this slides we will learn about femoral nerve injury and obturator nerve injury. To understand the injury of femoral nerve and its complications we have to first know the anatomy or the course of the nerve. So femoral nerve arises from L2, L3 and L4 nerve roots and then it forms the femoral nerve which enters the pelvic cavity anterior to the pelvic bone. So here it supplies to psoas major and to iliacus. After that it continues anterior to the hip joint where it supplies to the sartorius and pectineus muscle. Further it passes medial to the femur bone and then supplies to the rectus femoris at the mid soft area and then it supplies to vastus medialis, vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius. So now as you have known this course of the nerve, so if the injury is at the level of iliac crest or above that then all the muscles supplied by the femoral nerve will be weak or paralyzed. If the nerve is injured at the level of hip joint then sartorius, pectineus and quadriceps muscle that is rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis and vastus intermediate intermediates will be paralyzed or weak. <clears throat> if there is a fracture of the shaft of femur then sartorius pectineus as well as psoas major and iliacus may be spared whereas rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis and vastus intermediates may be weak or paralyzed. So from course of the nerve we can understand many things after the femoral nerve has been injured we can predict the level of injury and also plan our rehabilitation program. What are the main causes for femoral nerve injury? The compression of femoral nerve injury may be caused by inguinal ligament as it passes under the inguinal ligament. Any kind of trauma to the pelvic bone such as pelvic fracture can injure femoral nerve. Retroperitoneal hematoma or the collection of blood or bleeding Posterior to the abdomen is called as retroperitoneal hematoma which may cause compression. Total abdominal hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is a surgery done to remove the uterus. So the incision will be through the abdomen. Direct trauma such as fracture pelvis or fracture of head of the femur. Dislocation of the head of the femur. All this kind of trauma can cause femoral nerve injury. Catheter placement into the femoral artery which lies very close to the femoral nerve in the femoral triangle. So because of the catheter placement it may compress the femoral nerve. Tumor at the areas of pelvis or hip and uh, total hip arthroplasty are some of the causes. So arthroplasty means total replacement or hemi replacement of the hip joint. So you can see in this picture the arthroplasty for hip joint is done where the degenerated hip joint is replaced by the artificial hip joint. To understand the course of sensory supply, you can see the intermedial cutaneous nerve of thigh and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. Uh, you can see these two branches which arises below the lateral circumference femoral artery that is at the thigh. And then other sensory supply are to the skin on the medial side of the leg and to the skin on medial side of the foot up to the ball of great toe. So these are the sensory supplies of the femoral nerve. If femoral nerve is injured above the level of hip joint then all the sensory supply to this area you can see the dermatom area this area will be altered whereas if the injury is below the knee joint then only the sensory supply to the leg and the foot will be altered. What are the clinical presentations for femoral nerve injury? Severe pain that begins below the inguinal ligament. Pain may spread to the distribution of the saphenous nerve. Local tenderness in the groin region. Medial leg and calf numbness. Reduced sensation. Diminished knee reflex as uh, knee reflex is supplied by femoral nerve. Therefore, there will be diminished knee reflex. And reduced sensation will be to the cutaneous supply by the femoral nerve. Tingling, burning and numbness may be experienced by the patient. 
weakness of the hip flexors what are the hip flexors psoas major and iliacus so if the level of injury is above the hip joint or above the pelvis then psoas major and iliacus may be involved and knee extensions will be mostly involved in case of femoral nerve injury as the level of injury may be at the level of shaft of the femur or at the level of hip joint or above that difficulty going upstairs and downstairs are some of the disabilities that patient come across buckling of the knee is another clinical feature this is because of the weakness of knee extensors that is quadriceps muscle so buckling of the knee where patient complains about feeling of giving away of the knee that is while walking upstairs or downstairs especially walking downstairs patient feel that the knee is giving away that is it cannot hold the position of extension next clinical presentation is femoral nerve tension test which will be positive the femoral nerve tension test is also called as femoral nerve stretch test so test used to screen for sensitivity possibly related to nerve root impingements it was first described by wasserman in 1919 so in this patient will be asked to lie prone then the knee will be flexed in this position if patient complains of tingling and numbness over the dermatome area supplied by the femoral nerve then we can predict that femoral nerve may be compressed if patient doesn't complain of pain while the patient is in prone lying with knee flexed then we can add one more component that is hip extension so with knee flexion with knee flexion and hip extension patient will mostly complain of tingling and numbness but even in this position if patient doesn't complain then there is no nerve injury or entrapment but if patient complains of tingling and numbness in this position there will be a femoral nerve compression now let us discuss about the physiotherapy management of femoral nerve injury first what are the goals for physiotherapy management reduction of pain will be the primary goal prevent complications such as stiffness of the knee joint or atrophy of the muscle and tightness of the muscles maintain and increase muscle strength improve sensory function educate patient to protect denervated skin ultimately improve activity of daily living of the patient to prevent knee buckling we can use knee bracing that will prevent buckling of the knee while walking downstairs or in normal ground passive range of motion exercises and mobilizations will help in reducing stiffness to the knee joint as well as maintain the range of motion for reducing pain tens and massage can be applied as well as laser therapy laser therapy will also help in biostimulation of the nerve tissue and help in regeneration passive range of motion mobilizes and stretching as we have already discussed will maintain the range of motion reduce stiffness and maintain the length of the muscle tissue especially for the quadriceps and hamstring sensory stimulation can be given such as stroking brushing and icing to the dermatomal area supplied by the femoral nerve strengthening exercise can be given according to the mmt finding if the mmt finding is 0 or 1 electrical stimulation can be given to the quadricep muscle as well as to iliopsoas muscle if it is involved if it is mmt grade 2 suspension therapy can be given where the patient will be in side lying and then the lower limb below the knee joint should be supported by the sling and patient will be asked to extend the knee from flexed position i don't have the picture for the suspension therapy neither the video demonstration so kindly imagine the patient has to be in side lying position with lower limb below the knee flexed and supported by on the sling and then we will instruct the patient to perform extension of the knee if the psoas major and iliacus is involved then we will ask the patient to flex the hip joint while the lower limb is supported on the sling and the patient will be in side lying position if it is grade 2 plus active assisted range of motion exercises can be performed which can be in supine lying position for grade 3 active range of motion exercises for grade 3 plus progressive resistance exercises can be performed so once the patient is able to contract the muscles 
that may be grade 2 or grade 2 plus then we can start with isometric exercises for the quadriceps you can see in the picture we have to place a towel roll below the knee joint and we'll ask the patient to contract the muscles and compress the towel below the knee joint muscle that has to contract is quadricep muscle we'll ask the patient to hold the position for 10 seconds and then we'll ask the patient to release the contraction we'll give rest interval for 40 seconds and again ask the patient to repeat the contraction so we can ask the patient to perform for three sets with 10 seconds hold for progressive resistance exercises we can use weight curves or manual resistance by the therapist or theraband so you can see patient should be in sitting position we'll place the weight cuff on the distal part of the lower limb and ask the patient to perform extension of the knee joint for strengthening quadriceps muscle to strengthen the hip flexors we can place the patient in supine lying position and ask the person to flex the ask the patient to flex the hip joint against the resistance in this case we are using weight cuff as a resistance we'll ask the patient to perform 10 repetitions for three sets after every set we will give the rest interval to the patient so this is a picture where theraband can be used for hip flexors so theraband will be tied on the distal part of the limb which has to be flexed the other end of the theraband should be placed under the other limb which will be fixed and then we'll ask the patient to flex against the resistance of the theraband next coming to obturator nerve injury so obturator nerve arises from L2, L3 and L4 nerve roots and passes to the anterior aspect of the pelvis where it supplies to the muscles which are obturator externus, adductor brevis, adductor longus and adductor magnus. So adductor magnus mainly the adductor part of the magnus. Hamstring part of the magnus is supplied by sciatic nerve whereas adductor part of the magnus is supplied by obturator nerve. You can see the pathway or the course of the obturator nerve here. It arises from the L2, L3 and L4 nerve root and then passes anterior to the pelvic bone. Then it enters the obturator foramen. So after entering the obturator foramen, it supplies the nerve supply to pectineus which is rarely supplied. The main supplies are to adductor longus, adductor brevis, obturator externus and adductor magnus. So if the obturator nerve is injured at the level of pelvis above that or at the level of obturator foramen, all these muscles will be paralyzed. The sensory or cutaneous supply of the obturator nerve is by cutaneous branch of the obturator nerve which supplies the skin of the middle part of the medial thigh. Main causes for obturator nerve injury is surgery to the area that is at the level of pelvis any kind of surgery which could be hysterectomy, abdominal surgery of all kinds, compression by the psoas major, inguinal hernia, aneurysm at the iliac artery, synovial cyst, trauma to the pelvis such as fracture. This all can be causes for obturator nerve injury. Some other causes are total hip arthroplasty which is replacement of the hip joint by artificial articulating surfaces malposition of the lower limb for prolonged period of time, entrapment in the adductor magnus or direct assault to the nerve. 